Make sure promoters, if you're having an event, to so make sure to give us a hala via Facebook and we'll make sure that we're there to cover your event. We're going into our first video of the day. And this is an artist from St. Thomas and her name is Kay Victoria. And she is presenting her new video, which is Concussion, featuring the Virgin Islands' own Pressure Bus Pipe. Hope you enjoy. Alright, you gotta do what you gotta do, you know. I gotta work to make money. Yeah, but this is the biggest weekend of my life and you're gonna miss and it. And I'm sorry you're you're going miss it, baby. to miss it. I don't it. want to. Well you obviously do. You have a choice. They offered you a job. That don't mean you have to go. But right? I have to, but and I'm go. coming back. You could have stayed out for this weekend here. But I guess I I'm got no time for Maybe this. it's something in LA that you you know. Right. You wanna just have an attitude? I'm having a white party this weekend and you're gonna miss it. Have fun. Hope you choke on a pretzel. KV. Hey, you know it's pressure was spy alongside KV, you know what I mean? Alright. So sweet. Maybe it was something I did, I did to make you feel like you can't be here with me. Or maybe it was all my decisions distorting your vision. That was Kay Victoria.
Victoria and Fresh Bus Pipe in Concussion. I hope you choke on a pretzel. <laughs> That part was so funny. Uh, big up to all the dancers and everybody that participated in that video, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Now, so many of us have grown up going to WIM on field trips when we were in elementary and high school and so forth. And WIM is trying to extend their services to the community and let everyone know that they're just more than a museum but that they're also giving activities there for you to learn how to do your family tree and also to get people more aware about our history here in the Virgin Islands. So they had a list of activities and what's going down was there. And right now we're at Wim Museum and this week is part of our Come Home to St. Croix activities. And basically what Come Home to St. Croix is all about is for people who are Bani, as they say, people who are living away but was born here, and also people who have adopted St. Croix as their place that they decided to live. And it's your way of learning more about your history, about preserving your history. Wim has so much to offer. We've got a great library where you can come and do your family research. We have these great grounds that you could also come on out and visit us here. We've got picnic benches set up all over the property. Just come down with your family and have lunch or so. We have a grand Crujan quadrille that's happening on Friday night. So if you didn't make it to the quadrille, we also have activities all weekend. On Saturday, we have three lectures. Larry Larson is going to talk more about VI history. We've got Miss Veronica Gordon who's going to do something about a medicinal plant walk. You know, these days how everything is getting expensive as far as doctors and medicine, it's always good to know what you have in your backyard that can heal some of the little ailments that you have. Dimitri Copeman is going to talk a little bit about VI music. And then on Sunday, we're going to have a grand family fun day. All those games you played as a kid whether it was jacks or jump rope or double dutch or handball we're going to be doing a lot of those activities on property we're going to have a quell bay band is going to be here uh, thinking derby and his little guys who plays the banjo they're going to be here also rookie Renhold jackson he has another little group they're going to be out here playing we have moko jumbies that's going to be on the property we're hoping that we can get armstrong for armstrong ice cream to come out here also a couple vendors that's related to what we're doing come home to st croix is going to be a yearly event we want people to plan your family reunions around this time of the year because the grounds would be available probably you want to do a little bit of research just questions I got the other night slaves in our family was one of the Danish documentaries we showed on Tuesday night and some of the questions that came up watching that documentary I went home and started to talk to my grandmother about our background also you know, they say a tree without roots, easy to fall when the first wind comes down. There's a lot of things that's going on, especially with kids right now, where if you don't know your family history, you don't know where you came from, that one enslaved person survived in order for you to be here. Lots of sacrifices was made in order for you to be here. You need to get a sense of self about yourself in order for you to start doing productive, positive things. Slaves in the Family was a Danish documentary. It's a four-part series. On Tuesday night, we showed two parts. Camilla Jensen Tyson's family, we did one part on her. Now, we also did another part on Victor Cornelius. Victor Cornelius, I think, was, take, was born about 1898, taken from St. Croix, in 1905 and he was part of the Tivoli exhibit and just the thing that it took him from here to be part of an exhibit but he stayed in Denmark learned fluent Danish of course became a teacher and married a Swedish woman and had his family in Denmark his grandson started to research do a little bit of research and found out his grandfather was from here from St. Croix his grandson is a musician and was able to come back to the islands and meet with other people that was his family I think if um, Leona Watson was on his son was a niece of Victor Cornelius and the family knew about him being taken up to Denmark at that time. So when you start researching the family roots, the thing that here it is, his grandfather was a musician. This gentleman is very Danish, speaks da Danish, and he is also a musician too. So it came down within the family ranks. So it makes people a little bit curious. But the whole premise of slaves in the family was Danes who didn't look like other Danes and got curious about the way they look. Whether it's because their hair was a little bit kinkier, their eyes was a different color, their skin tanned a little bit quickly, and they started to research and find out that, yes, my great-grandfather was a slave, an enslaved person, or my great-grandmother was originally brought from Africa and she's here from the islands. So it's, I'm hoping that we can get to show it again because there was a good amount of people here that day. 
but we're hoping that we can do a little film series and show a couple more of those episodes and maybe we'll get some more people here on the grounds to watch it. Hi Stephanie, thanks for letting me be on your show today. Um, my name is Sonia Jacobs Dow, I'm the Executive Director of the St. Croix Landmark Society and I know that a lot of people recognize the name Estate Wim Museum or the Lawets Family Museum and they may not be familiar with the name of the organization that runs both of those but that is the St. Croix Landmark Society and we set about to make sure that the heritage of St. Croix, the unique historical and cultural legacy of St. Croix is appreciated, is known and is appreciated so that it can be passed on. Um, this week, uh, July 17th through the 24th, we've had a very special program. We're halfway through the week. Um, it's called Come Home to St. Croix, and it's all about helping our community to come closer to the heritage and the culture, hoping that that will begin to have a positive impact on young people, old people, all our people. Um, whether they're born on St. Croix, they have roots in St. Croix, or there are other people who've just found a way, found home in St. Croix. We are standing in our exhibit hall, um, which used to house our museum store for a number of years. The museum store has moved just next door to this room. And we have three very important exhibits that have been put up this week. Um, I wish I could take credit for them, but I can't. I need to give credit to the volunteers who've worked on it. Uh, Mrs. Carol Wakefield, Ms. Mary Roebuck, uh, Ms. Ricky Marshall, Ms. Shelley DeWeese, Ms. Joan Keenan. Um, I'm sure lots of other hands helped, and so I apologize if I missed the name of anyone. Uh, Ms. Winifred Clark Hardy, who've all been working to put up three exhibits for us. One of them is called The People of Wim. And what it does is trace some of the people that worked here in the early 1800s, late 1700s, that worked at this estate, um, trace them by name, by the kind of work that they did, and then using the various records that we have. The Landmark Society has a research library, again, with whom with which many people may not be familiar, but we want them to become more familiar. It has a very unique and extensive collection of records, um, unlike what you will find in other jurisdictions. In most places, when you're doing your family history, you have to go to the church and hope that they have retained the records and that they'll allow you access to the records. You have to go to vital statistics, you have to go to the court, you, know, you have to move around to the cemetery, wherever, trying to find records. Over the last 20 or so years, the Landmark Society has been able to um, collect copies of the records related specifically to St. Croix and in many cases St. Thomas, St. John, Puerto Rico and other areas. But for St. Croix we have the tax list which is where slaves would have shown up. Um, sometimes we call them the slave list but remember that enslaved Africans were treated as property and so they were taxed in much the same way that our homes and land that we own are taxed nowadays. So there was a listing that would give the name of the individual who was enslaved and their valuation. It very often gave their age as well and that might have been one of the factors that played in on um, their capability to work or incapability to work. So we've got those records, we have census records. Um, the Danish government was very good about keeping records. Um, whatever their motivations might have been in that day, maybe the king required certain reports to be given to them and so on. But we are very grateful today for their dedication to keeping those records. Um, we have copies of vital statistics records. We have copies of the Superior Court's marriage record. Um, there are a list of burger briefs, and a burger brief was in essence a license that a free a free man would have been given to do business in the Virgin Islands so that you can trace the enslaved as well as those who were free. Um, the census records took a lot of information including religion, date of baptism, um, in some cases the name of the mother or in many cases one census in particular I believe it's the 1841 census that tells you how many children a woman had alive. And so when, when, for instance, when I was doing my research, I knew that my great-grandmother had a brother, and I thought it was just the two of them, until I found her mother in the records and found how many children she had alive. So that then allowed me to begin searching for all of them, and, and I've had a lot of success in finding those records. Make sure to visit WIM and learn more about how you can rediscover